Hello, my name's Christopher Lovejoy. I'm a junior doctor working in London and a clinical data scientist. And last night I had the first of a stretch of four night shifts in the a &E department of St. George's Hospital. St. George's Hospital is one of the largest hospitals in London and one of the four major trauma centers. So here are some videos I recorded before, during and after that shift. So this morning, I've just been to the gym and I've got a long day ahead because today I'm starting night shifts, which basically means that from now, which is around 8 a.m. until next tomorrow morning at 6 a.m., I'm gonna be awake. And it's getting pretty busy in the department, getting peckish. But it's going well. I've got a couple more hours to go. I've seen probably about eight patients, and yeah, I'm feeling good. I'll probably, I'm, I'll have a quick break see two more patients, I imagine maybe one if it's complicated, and then I will be done for the shift and I'll head home. So I'm just stopping to have some food. Important to keep fueled throughout the shift. So one thing I love about A&E, from the point of view of, of the experience, is that you see such a huge variety of patients. I really, um, you're constantly challenged and you're constantly seeing new things, and you learn from pretty much every patient that you see. I find what I try and do is just take at least one key takeaway from every patient that I see. And on a 10 hour shift, I might see maybe 10 patients. And if I'm learning 10 things every, 10 new things every shift, then over time, you know, that adds up. So the way that a &E works is everybody works on shifts to, to ensure that there's always adequate cover. Sometimes when you finish a shift, you might have things left over, in which case you'll hand them over to the next person. So when I arrived to my shift, I was handed over a patient from my colleague. This patient had low hemoglobin because they'd had some bleeding for the last couple of weeks and they were symptomatic with this, which meant that they need a blood transfusion. So it was my job to make sure that the patient had their bloods taken in order to then receive that transfusion. After that, I saw a lovely 96 year old lady who came in with a red eye. She not had any other symptoms with it, which typically means that it's what we call a subconjunctival hemorrhage. And it's something that settles by itself and we're not too worried about. So I explained this to her and sent her home and she seemed very relieved. So the third patient who came in was someone who was referred from the GP because they were worried that their kidney wasn't functioning well based on some blood tests that they'd had. We checked their kidney function tests again in the department and actually they hadn't really changed from the most recent ones that we had on record from a few weeks previously. So we weren't too concerned that there was a short term change. In this case, the patient was known to be diabetic, which means that over time your kidney function can deteriorate, but there wasn't anything that we needed to do immediately. So we discharged that patient home. And one of the key things about A&E is that your role is to triage people in terms of seriousness and in terms of is there anything that we need to do right now? And many things that are less serious, it's perfectly reasonable to follow up over a period of time, perhaps with a clinic appointment or otherwise. The next patient I saw was a really lovely 90 year old gentleman who unfortunately had very marked Parkinson's. So he continually had a tremor in both of his arms and in one of his legs. And this was despite being on several Parkinson's medications and also having a deep brain stimulation implant which is an implant that they put into the brain and it delivers electrical stimulation to a specific part of the brain to try and suppress the activity that causes Parkinson's. And he'd come in today because he'd had a number of falls in the last few days because the Parkinson's had made him very unsteady and, and prone to having falls. So we assessed him, we made sure he hadn't damaged himself from the falls, which meant we did a CT head to rule out any bleed in the brain. And then once we were happy that he hadn't had any damage, we kept him in overnight so that tomorrow morning he can have an assessment by the physiotherapists to make sure that he's mobilizing okay and that he's safe at home to see if there's anything else that they need to give him to, for further support. After that, I saw a girl who had hurt her ankle, um, which had happened a few weeks ago, but she was having ongoing pain with it. The main thing we want to rule out in this case is whether or not she's had a fracture of her ankle. So we did an x-ray and it didn't show any fracture. So we're happy to send her home with painkillers. The advice is RICE, which is rest, ice, compression, and elevation. And I saw a gentleman who had been riding his bike when he'd been clipped by a bus, which had caused him to then fall off his bike come onto his left-hand side of his body, and he'd hurt his leg and his arm. On examination, they were both quite tender. You could see some bruising and some swelling. We did some x-rays and it showed that he had actually fractured the head of his radius, which meant that he had difficulty what we call pronating and supinating. And therefore we sent him home in a sling to come back to be followed up in the fracture clinic. 
After that, I saw a young girl who had come in because she had a collapse while out in public, and it wasn't too clear what caused this. We just wanted to make sure there were no serious causes, no heart arrhythmias, no stroke, no seizures, no bleeds in the brain, no evidence of a heart attack, that she didn't have a low blood pressure, and that she wasn't diabetic. And after we ruled out all of those, we were happy for her to go home and to be followed up by her GP. So it's quite interesting working in the department at the moment because until very recently, we had the 24 hours in A&E crew here who were filming and recording for next year's season of 24 hours in a &E, which was an interesting experience because we had cameras all around the department that were set up. Sometimes you'd see them rotating to follow you as you walked past, or sometimes they'd ask us to put on a microphone when we went to go see a patient. And then when you had the microphone seeing the patient, you would notice the camera just move and look at you and maybe zoom in or out. And to be honest, it was somewhat off-putting. Um, I didn't mind it too much, to be honest, but that was an interesting experience. But it definitely feels like there's a lot less pressure now that the cameras are away. You can be a bit more relaxed. So I've now got about two hours more of my shift, so I'm gonna head downstairs, see a few more patients. So I finished the shift, I'm heading home. So I've been awake now for 26 straight hours. Yeah, I definitely feel mildly delirious, but the first night is the hardest, I find. And from then, your body gets used to it over the three, four days until by the end, you're actually used to it and then you have to switch back, which is then the challenge of getting back into a normal van, which always takes me a few days. And I'm home now. Um, I didn't actually drive home, but everyone at home is asleep, so I didn't want to make too much noise. So the last few patients, I saw a lady who'd had a fall. She had some pain in her back. It was unlikely that she had a fracture given the mechanism of injury but because she had osteoporosis we decided to get some x-rays of her spine they didn't show any fractures so she is also going to be going home so that's me done for tonight I've got three more shifts left this week while night shifts in many ways are no fun because you're very tired all of the time you don't really get an opportunity to socialize because you're working when everyone else is sleeping and vice versa days seem to fly by without doing much other than working but actually there are some very cool things about night shifts. Firstly, it's very peaceful. There's no one else around. You get to just hang out. There's something quite team bonding about working together during the night shift with this team. Working in quite tough, high pressure situations in the middle of the night. Something quite cool about it. It's a lot of fun. To be honest, I'm kind of too tired to say anything particularly insightful or interesting. So I think it's about time I head and get some sleep, but I'll be back tomorrow. So that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you find these kind of videos interesting and I can make more. That's it for today. See you next time.